Hello again. Let's talk more about jQuery. In the last video, I, you know, I introduced jQuery and I linked to jQuery here on the CDN and then we set up a simple page using jQuery. And what I did is I put the script at the bottom of the page and then I put the rest of my HTML above the script. Let me talk a little bit more about that. So we're loading the script here at the top of the page in this tag, okay? And you'll notice that this is a script tag and it uses the source attribute to link to a file. And in this case, we're linking to a file somewhere on the internet at, you know, code.jquery.com. And the script tag here is empty, there's nothing in it. If you use the source attribute here, you can't put anything inside this tag, it, it will be ignored, okay? We're putting the script tag at the top of the page because we want to load the JavaScript before other stuff. So we want to load this early in, in our page, you know, before we load a lot of content down here, okay? Next, I put the script tag here where it, it actually, this script tag actually contains my active script. And I put that down at the bottom. So this is the script that I wrote that's going to be active on the page. It's going to do things on our page. And I put this at the very bottom of the body tag because this script can't act on things on the page. Like, for example, here we're trying to select the title element. And it won't be able to select that title element if that title element hasn't loaded yet. Okay? And HTML loads the, the documents starting at the top, and it essentially loads them character by character all the way down. So by placing this at the bottom of the body tag, we can be sure that all of these elements up above will be loaded first before the script is loaded. Now, that's important because JavaScript will, ex or the browser will execute JavaScript as soon as the, the script tag is loaded. Okay, so as soon as this script tag is loaded, then the jQuery code here is executed and, you know, it doesn't actually do anything on the page, but it sets something up in the background so we have a, a functioning jQuery mechanism. Okay? So that's okay. Like, we want to set that up before anything else happens, right? And then at the bottom, this script is going to act on, you know, this element on the page and display, you know, hello world inside this h1 tag. We can see it here, right? And we, you know, we can't do that if this hasn't loaded yet, okay? So you'll see if I, if I move the h1 tag down to here and then refresh my page, you'll see I, I don't see the, the, the hello world anymore. Okay, so, uh, you know, why is that? Well, you know, JavaScript loaded the script tag and then it immediately ran this code here. But at this point, only the top of the page had been loaded and this element doesn't exist yet. And so this, you know, doesn't find anything with the, uh, you know, this selection here doesn't find anything with the ID name title. And so, you know, it can't put any text in there. Okay. So let's put that back, right? So one more thing. So when we use um, dollar sign title, we're essentially selecting an element and then we're going to act on it. And when we use HTML, we're setting the HTML content for that element. And this HTML um, function replaces the content inside the tag. So for example, if I, if I put some question marks in here and then I test my page you can see it says hello world and we don't see the question marks and that's because the HTML function replaces the inner HTML content with the string that you have here okay and this string can be anything can be as long as you like um, in the parse examples we'll be grabbing this data from our database and then, you know, populating these tags with data from the database, right? Let's try a little experiment. So if I put a comment here, this, you know, the double slash um, means that JavaScript should ignore this code, right? And not execute that code. So if I do that, when I refresh here, you can see the question marks, right? 
And then when I activate you know, this by removing the comment, now when this script runs, we'll be replacing these question marks with the, uh, the words, hello world. Okay, so I, I think you get the idea there, right? So what else can we do with this? You know, I, I like this, but what if we want to take an action? So, you know, I don't want something to happen immediately. I mean, sometimes I want something to happen immediately when the page loads, but other times I want to wait until somebody clicks an element or, you know, has an interaction with the page, and then I want stuff to happen. Okay, so let, let's, let's do that. I'm going to make an anchor tag here. And in my anchor tag, I'm going to give it an ID name, okay? Because I want to target this anchor tag with JavaScript, and I'll call it, you know, click me, okay? And then I'll put the text click hello right there, right? And what I'd like to do is change the way this works so that when you click this link, then the the words hello world are written into the h1 okay so what we're going to do is this we're going to say dollar sign we'll make a selector that points to this element right here and then we'll say click okay and so this is jquery's helper method there's actually this is actually tied to a couple other methods on and bind that add events to objects. And we'll talk more about events later. But this is a, a simple helper method that binds a click event to this object, okay, or this element. And when we, when we want to click on something, we include a function that will be executed on the click, okay? So here we're going to target the click me and then we're going to add a click event. <clears throat> and what's going to happen is the click event is, is, you know, this is going to wait until you actually click the element. And when you click it with the mouse or tap it with your finger, then, um, then this function here will be executed. Okay. Um, event handlers, this will call this function a handler because it handles the click event. Event handlers receive a variable in this area here inside the parentheses and that variable is an object a JavaScript object that contains properties describing the event that just occurred so when you click this event describes the click it tells you where you clicked on the screen gives you the location it also tells you you know some other information about the click and then in the curly brackets here this is a block so then the code block for the function here for this event handler the code block is the code that is executed when that, you know, handler is, is executed, okay? So, uh, so here when we click, essentially, you know, when we click the code inside the curly brackets will be, will be run, okay? So what I want to do is I want to move this into the block right here. Okay, so we've got click me, click, function, event, right? And then inside the code block, we're going to have, um, we're going to say select the title and set the text to hello world. So we'll save that and then let's load up our page here. So now you can see the question marks there. That's the default text that we had in the tag. And then here's our link. And when I click on the link, you can see the page loads the hello world like really briefly. And then it goes back to the question marks. So what's happening there? That's like a common problem that people run into and they're very frustrated by it. Well, this, um, this anchor tag has an href in it and the href says to load something. So essentially, you know, if you're familiar with the anchor tag, you know, you put the address for the new page that you want to load. And in our case, since I left this blank, the browser is going to reload this page. And whenever the browser reloads a page, it deletes the JavaScript and it loads the whole page over again from the top. So let's imagine what is happening here in slow motion. You click the link. It runs this JavaScript, but at the same time, it reloads the page and deletes the page, the current 
page and its JavaScript from memory. And then it begins loading this page here from the top and it loads jQuery again and then it continues and it loads the H1 and we see the question marks and then it loads this anchor tag again and then it sets up the jQuery down here at the bottom and then we're left with the page in the original state okay so you know and that's fine for some situations in this case we're sort of creating a single page application so we're creating sort of a piece of software that runs in the browser and we don't want to refresh the page so we don't want the page to refresh we don't want it to load new JavaScript stuff unless we you know are loading text from outside via JavaScript and populating these these tags in here we don't want to you know reload the HTML and the script tag and all this other stuff right so how do we do that well there's a couple things you can do if you put the hash mark in here you know any hash ID here will tell this link to jump to that ID on the page okay and so I click there and it works but the reason it's working here is because normally if you use the name here like for example if I had a div in on my page named main if I type you know hash mark main then what will happen is clicking this link will scroll the page to the the element with this ID name so by putting the hash mark in there we're saying hey you know don't load another page instead you know scroll the current page to this ID name so you know that's why this is working we're just giving it the hash mark and saying like you know there's no name on the end of this right you know take us to the ID that is like you know no ID name right so so that's why that works it's nothing magical right um, another thing that we can do so that that would fix it and that's that's a possibility right another thing we can do is we can use this event object so one of the things that happens with the with the event object that is very po important to our single page application is that the event object has a method called prevent default so what I'm gonna do is inside my click function I'm going to and I have to have the event variable here inside the function so I can use it here inside the code block okay so it has to be defined here as a parameter for this function goes in the parentheses and then that will make it available here inside the code block you know inside the curly brackets there okay when I call event dot prevent default or when I write that um, prevent default prevents the default behavior of this event so the default behavior of this event without the hash mark in there is to reload the page or you know if I had an address in here like you know my dot HTML then you know clicking this link would take me to this page event prevent default would prevent the browser from going to this HTML page so you would click the link and it just wouldn't go anywhere okay so this is what we want to do here maybe is you know prevent the default behavior and then that way we can run the JavaScript here and we can handle the link and do something with the link without the browser handling the link okay so let's save that and give this a try so I'll refresh it here and when I click hello then I see hello world there and it doesn't refresh the page okay so there's a quick introduction to um, the click event and the event object thanks for watching